you. And let's welcome uh, Daniel Howard from the SCTE to stage. Okay. Oh, this way, that way. Leslie, how are you? I am well, how are you? Just fine, thank you. All right, let's talk about SCTE and energy reduction. We are all about energy reduction. I've and heard uh, that. as Ralph mentioned, uh, the focus on the home is just one component of the overall energy strategy for cable. Uh, right. We're all about energy uh, reduction and efficiency in the plant, network facilities, really the, the entire network as an entity. So uh, we yep. see a lot of improvements that we can make there and we're doing it. And on your tagline on your email it says SCTE, powered by the sun. That's right. Uh, and actually, I've got a picture to show you that all in right, the slides. Yes. But uh, don't take my word for all this about uh, how important energy is. Let's see a video clip from Mark Koblitz, arguably one of the uh, most famous visionaries of the cable industry. Energy issues are a centerpiece of national and global public policy because they bear on a range of economic, strategic, and environmental concerns. Globally, the race is on to secure sustainable, renewable sources of energy, to improve energy conservation, and to make the energy grid smarter and more efficient. Like virtually every other industry, a cable must confront the issue of energy management and formulate a strategy for the future. For a variety of reasons, uh, we have uh, already been focused on ways to increase efficiency, reduce power consumption, develop alternative powering sources in our facilities and our network in, in the home. Today, this focus and the need for long-term planning is more important than ever. The rapidly increasing demands placed on our broadband networks require us to anticipate how best to meet our customers' requirements for speed, capacity, and reliability. These, de these demands our networks, in turn, create the need for more energy, as well as the increasing efficient use of energy. So what is he saying here? What's the real message that uh, Mark has? Um, I think the big message is, our networks are always going to be expanding in capacity. With the demand is growing exponentially, they're going to have to uh, grow to uh, meet that need. Are we going to make sure that we have enough energy to power those networks uh, and, uh, and can do so cost efficiently? This chart actually shows an example of what a lot of people have been thinking about, Mark in particular, is at some point do we reach a limitation on our uh, growth and revenue uh, because of the form factor and the energy uh, consumption of these networks. Right. Um, is, that, is that real, seriously, you know? Uh, yes, seriously, that, uh, the chart on the right here uh, actually shows a couple of different scenarios. Um, if it's 40%, 50%, 60% annual growth rate, uh, the chart over on the left actually shows you the historical trend and it really does match Nielsen's law of 50%. So how are we gonna power all this? We've gotta have more energy, we have to have more efficiency in our networks. Well, uh, why does it matter? Uh, because we're talking about a billion dollars. The difference in terms of uh, what we consume now is about a billion dollars going to uh, even a marginal growth rate. We're gonna add another half a billion up to another billion, maybe two billion uh, if, if our networks are even more successful. It's the problem of success, right? right? So uh, what do we do about this? Well, the SCTE. Well, let me ask you about oh, yes. that. So, Consumer usage of broadband is what we're talking about, it and the, the 45 to, and it's higher than that now, right? 45 to, I've heard six, up to 65 percent. Some growth. operators have told me 70 percent. Okay, so it's just growth. a remark. I mean, it's never happened before in any other industry this amount of growth. So this is another offshoot of that discussion, saying not only are we using more and more screens to connect to video over the internet, but it's it's the the cost of it could get ugly. That's right, and we don't yeah. want to be limited. Uh, in terms of our ability to offer these new services by how much energy it takes to power this network or how much it costs us to provide that energy. Right, okay, so. 
Yeah, so 18, what are we? I thought it was 17. You added one. Well, there's another. Uh, the, the 18th is the secret one. You have to go uh, talk to uh, okay. SET's version of Dr. Energy and uh, Mr. Sparky uh, over in our booth to uh, actually hear more about that. But these are just some examples of it. Adaptive power, increased hardware density, improved energy efficiency. Our semi-program that Mark Koblitz, that video we saw was uh, his keynote speech at our last one. Uh, and I'd like to mention that we are walking the walk as well. Let's maybe see something. Those are the uh, 17 you just mentioned. The top uh, two in green are already out there. The next three are in process. So we're really making uh, great strides in implementing this vision. Awesome. So what does this mean, okay? Uh, adaptive power system uh, interface specification is all about only using the energy that you need to to deliver the bits you need to at that particular moment in time. Why power our networks up and keep them at a static level um, if we don't have to deliver all of those bits all the time. And there's diurnal variations of traffic, uh, there's, there's geographical variations. Why not be energy proportional in how we uh, use that energy in the network? And that's what this is saying. Mm -hmm. But it's not just about uh, you know, being able to be more efficient in how we consume it and adaptive, it's having the proper benchmarks. So you know, what are the right metrics we should be thinking about when a cable operator buys new equipment? Is it watts per qualm, watts per service group? Um, what's the throughput per cubic foot, right? I mean, if I want to pack this into a tighter and tighter space, and you, know, you can't just build a new head end and hub overnight. There's so right. much form factor available. So that's what these two standards go after. And the predictive alarming talks about improving uh, the reliability or the availability of the network. Very important stuff if we want to stay at the top of the broadband marketplace. So the semi forum I mentioned that actually went back all the way to 2009. Uh, we've had these twice a year, the Green Pavilion at Expo, and you see a couple of shots of that. Solar panels are always a, a big deal, right? Yeah. So we actually did that ourselves. We have solar power, thanks to our friends from Alpha, who you'll be talking to in just a few minutes. And we have a hydrogen fuel cell, thanks to our friends from Comscope, who you'll also be talking to today. These vendors are helping us walk the walk and show small businesses and the cable industry overall how they can actually make great strides. And how much would you guess we've saved in energy uh, in the SCTE alone just by doing these as well as LED lighting and other sorts of things? Let's see, uh, $17. Well, 40%, 40% okay. reduction in our energy costs and utilization just by being smarter about things Since like... When? Since when? What's the time frame? We started this uh, probably about a year and a half ago was when yeah. some of this went online. That's pretty but amazing. But it's huge. All of our IT is now powered by sustainable uh, sources of energy. Do you have that at your house too? I'm starting. I have yeah. some LED lights um, and I'm actually looking at the solar power. A lot of this has to do with incentives, right? I mean, if right. you want the payback period to be as short as possible, you have to take advantage of some of the incentives, but Georgia actually is fairly good about that. So my wife, who happens to be a double E as well, is on top of this problem. She's actually plotting a roadmap for how we will take our whole house and become more energy efficient. Speaking of your wife, can we speak to your cufflinks for a moment? Oh my heavens, so I don't know if the camera sees that. My probably wife not. found these uh, probably at an old Georgia Power Guys uh, estate sale. This is Ready Kilowatt. Anybody remember who Ready Kilowatt is? No, well, there's a, a few there, here. good. This was the mascot of the Rural Electrification of America ah, project. Very clever. That's, I interrupted your flow. Oh, that's fine. So. Uh, what does this really mean? Um, well, we're doing uh, things across the board for fleet, plant, the overall facilities and thinking. And uh, if you'd like to hear more about this, let's go to SCTE's version of uh, oh, right, Dr. Right, right, Energy right. and uh, Mr. Point Sparky. Where your booth is generally Our booth is generally right over there, right next to the Cable Labs folks, oh, and okay. we might even have a live feed. Oh, and just in case there you think is. those standards are boring, some of them are Emmy award-winning standards. Perish the thought. What yes. technical standard is boring, Daniel? I know, but we won an Emmy award for our uh, advertising yep, standard. There it is. Mm -hmm. And you can see some of the folks at our booth. We've got really, it's all about educating the cable industry about how to be smarter about their energy consumption and efficiency. Perfect. Well, thank you for telling us what's going on. All right. Thank you, Leslie, for having